Welcome back and today we're going to take a closer look at the Synology Router Manager. Now straight away you're probably noticing a slight change in the sound there. It's because to do this video I've had to move myself into a working office. Where you're hearing me talking now is the Span Offices. There's a chap from sales called Paywand and of course Eddie the web guy tucked into the corner there. Don't know what he's doing but I'm sure it's not good. So you're looking at Synology Router Manager 1.2, SRM 1.2 and this is the desktop you will see when logging into your Synology MR2200 AC. The device itself can once again be used as a standalone device or you can add it to your existing Wi-Fi network. For the case of this video, just to make it nice and straightforward, we're using the device as a standalone access point. I'm going to go through some of the apps, go through some of the features and facilities, go through one account that I've already set up and we're going to add a brand new account as we go. Okay, so it looks very similar to DSM. For those that have seen DSM before, it's even got the same menu at the top. File station, uh, if you connect a USB device there at the top, you're able to create an entire storage um, area where you can use it for backups or general file maintenance and management. Don't know who Moira is, we're just going to drop her down there. And from here, for those that are familiar with file station, you can set directories, user accounts, uh, different login privileges, quotas of storage, all that sort of thing, as well as shared access or private access as needed. Moving forward, there's the help section there, which for those who don't know what that means, you should probably go and watch another video, and the package center. Now in the package center, there isn't a huge number of apps currently available uh, for SRM 1.2, and that's because the router itself should do everything you need it to do. One app that I was really hoping we'd see was Plex, but unfortunately Plex isn't available for the router, which isn't a huge surprise, but given that there is a multimedia server um, that you can download and install on this device, as long as you've got an external storage device, then I'm kind of disappointed there isn't a Plex app as well. But the multimedia server application is still pretty good indeed. Um, um, Ed just walked over waving a small post-it note at me in the most passive-aggressive way I've ever seen and it's got the word Plex on it. Ed, would you care to elaborate on what that note said? Yeah. It does have Plex. There is, there's, not version. there's an unofficial version of Plex currently available. Well, shut my mouth. Um, we, so I'll get that for another video. We'll try and make that maybe the Plex video for this month. We'll get that sorted for you. But moving forward, the fact that there isn't an official Ed, supported Plex app currently available is definitely something to bear in mind. There are beta applications um, currently available as well, but a lot of those aren't in the store right now. So safe access is one that arrived in the latest update, and this is with lots of safeguards for employees, family members, that sort of thing, where it's got uh, predefined configurations for websites, whitelist, blacklist, all that sort of stuff to help you better protect you and your users in your office or home environment. On top of that, you've got the multimedia applications, as I've mentioned earlier, and more applications in the form of server apps, backup apps, and more. So again, download station, once again, most of these apps I should add, you're going to need uh, external storage via that USB port, be a USB stick or an external drive, so do bear that in mind. And on top of that, VPN plus server for those that want to factor in their existing virtual private network subscription into their network environment. So all the devices that are connected can reap the benefits of a VPN. Moving forward, we can talk about some of the preset apps on this. There's stuff like the log center, which is obviously going to tell you about things that are happening within the network environment, and a control panel that pretty much lets you dictate and control everything in a very user-friendly fashion. So the creating users and stuff like that we mentioned before, you can do that all from here, as well as playing with the connected storage or using network storage, such as a NAS that this device will pick up in the environment. Then you've got all the kind of familiar storage apps that those that have used a NAS before will be very, very familiar. From the device section here, we can take a close look at more of the information about the hardware inside and if we can head over to the performance manager to see more about how the device is working in the background. There's everything from updates and configurations and all that kind of stuff that you would expect from not just a NAS but a router in general. And given this is a mesh router, it is nice to see that you can synchronize this with your existing Synology account or create a brand new Synology account to um, access this mesh router from outside of your network environment anywhere in the world, which again, very handy indeed. 
Now, that's enough of the back end. Let's start talking about some of the key features of this device. From the network center here, you can ascertain the health and strength of the network environment you are in, along with monitoring the hardware inside. And from here, a lot of the analytical information can be obtained. If you've got a connected internet network, be it as a mesh system or delivered directly into the device, you can set up the device as an access point or as a primary router here in the operation mode. And that is as straightforward as it is. Click which one you want, go from there. The security settings is something you can set up that shouldn't come as a huge surprise to anyone that's used a router in the last 20 years. And the internet options are largely dictated about um, the IP and how this device lives on an existing network or how it defines its own network. Once again, a little bit technical here, but there's lots of easier options available in the other areas. Moving forward, we can go to Wi-Fi Connect, and from Wi-Fi Connect, this is where we add to an existing Wi-Fi network or create our very own wireless network. You have met, heard me mention in other videos about the guest network options, and this is where you can set up a sub-sub Wi-Fi network for family and friends, where you can have a better controlled, more restricted level of internet access for those users. In the wireless options section, from here, this is where we change all of our connections and passwords and everything. And the default password on any of these devices is just the word Synology. But again, remember, you can ramp up the security level all the way up to WPA3 enterprise level, if you so choose, or completely strip all security connected to the device. And again, you can choose whether these users or individual users or none of them have access to that USB storage and the WPS button on the back that we mentioned in the other video for connecting printers and easy smart connect access is readily available and configurable from this point. Um, in the Wi-Fi Connect is if you want to add an existing Wi-Fi network to your mesh system and for guest networks this is where you configure that guest portal that we mentioned earlier. Mac filter of course is if you want to be able to deny or allow certain devices to the Wi-Fi network in case they are exploitative or they're just devices that you're not comfortable connecting to your network. Moving forward from here, we can go into the next option, uh, which is in the network tool section. Now, from here, we've got some lovely analytical stuff where you can work out some back-end stuff beautifully well, as well as pull information or be a, lo a lot more targeted about the ways and um, the people that are connected to your Wi-Fi network, and definitely something I would recommend. The security advisor is something that's not exactly new, but definitely something that's existed in the Synology NAS environment for a long time, and I'm glad it's been carried over. It's if you want to assess the security and potential threat levels of your Synology mesh router by saying if you're using this as a work or personal home device, and then it will tailor the background searches of your device using malware protection, network authenticity checks, and more. Finally, let's go to it, the safe access. Now, this is the thing that Synology have been talking about for a hell of a long time. It is the ability to create profiles and a much better mapped network of connected users with that whole idea of being able to restrict websites, allow websites, give time management, website management, reward systems, and more. Now, we've already created one profile here in the form of me. I've connected my mobile phone and from here I can say how much internet I'm allowed. So for me, the internet schedule, we are going to give me unrestricted, no holds barred internet. We are going to go crazy town. We're going to give me full access as we see fit. Looking at the internet schedule here, we're going to allow me to have unrestricted access so we're going to make sure there's no internet schedule for Robbie, there's no time quote for Robbie, there's no web filter for Robbie. We are doing no safe search. I can look at what the hell I want, when the hell I want, and my whole profile there. I could add a photo of myself, but I'm not going to. Actually, let's see what's on this PC. This isn't even my PC. Let's see if we can find a half-decent picture to add here. Do you know what? This is Richard in the sales team. We're going to make him the picture. Why not? Just to show you how easy it is that now this profile has a picture and not just a letter. Again, there's the security stuff and you can add the exceptions list, most of which there are um, Google safe search options available as well. 
And again, there's lots of information about notifications about the kinds of things that are going to be stopped or exploited or prevented on this device. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to ask Eddie the web guy, you remember him from YouTube? Fun guy. Um, we're going to ask him to connect his phone to this device. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to get, see what happens when we restrict his access in some way, something I've wanted to do for a great deal of time. You connected, Eddie? That's the one, yep. You've taken a strange opportunity to be secretive and not talk on camera. It's the word Synology in lowercase. While he does that, we're going to set up a profile for him. So we're going to add a profile of Eddie the Web Guy. Now from here, this is where you choose a guest profile for people that are staying with you, a local network profile for people that are connected via a LAN port or a connected switch, and of course just a specific user profile overall. So we're going to go for the top one. From here, we're going to give, his, give him a name, and we're going to call him Eddie Webb. And Eddie the Web Guy, we're going to give him a photo as well. Uh, we're going to look for a photo for him on here, and I think we're going to go for Span Man, the very short-lived character that was going to be used for marketing purposes. Look at that cheerful hard drive there. Moving forward from there, we're going to find his device on the network, and the theory is that there it is, his phone is now found. Carrying on. Um, we're going to now assign that phone, and if he had a tablet, if he had any other number of devices, we can always add those further devices to his profile. From here, we are now going to completely restrict his access to the internet and all the cool websites. So his internet schedule, we're going to be very generous and give him, shall we say, let's remove all the internet here, so if we do blocked internet all the time but we'll be very generous we're going to give him a 15 minute window at 15 minutes past midnight on a Sunday we're going to give him 15 minutes of internet there moving forward we are then going to check up his time quota we're going to allow Eddie the web guy um, approximately three minutes of internet a day and after that three minutes of internet a day, we are going to completely restrict his searches of what he can do with the internet. So again, we're going to give him a child's profile. And again, you can create a completely customized profile if you so choose. And finally, I can create part of the reward system on this account. So the reward system is where if people do not break the rules that you've set for them, you can allot them a little bit of a bonus in terms of internet connectivity and you can do that ad hoc or semi-autonomously so I've given Eddie a whole hour free internet unfortunately it is on the child profile so with the exception of Sabibi's Blue Peter and Wikipedia he's not going to get a great deal of access from here with the safe search which is Google supported we can use Google to completely remove any dodgy searches that he might make. We can change YouTube restrictions directly from the mesh router, and we can use the Bing safe search to limit the number of websites he searches on the website. Bing, which I believe had nine people on it yesterday, it personal best. So that's about it for creating the user account. And again, if people do try to break the rules there, they will be met with a blue screen saying you can't go any further, you've used up your allowance, and admins will be notified if they try to transgress across those lines. And that's about it. I'm going to wrap things up here for SRM because we will be doing network tests with multiple access points in a further video. But thank you so much for watching. Buy your NAS from Span. Find out about NAS at NAS Compares. If you've got any questions, send me a message via Twitter at Robbie on the Tube. Thanks for watching.